Good evening and welcome to East Long Meadow High School for tonight's quarterfinal playoff matchup between the West Springfield Terriers and your East Long Meadow Spartans. I'm Brady Dobek, joined alongside the one and only Chad O'Brien. Chad, coming in to this week, East Long Meadow clenching a, a playoff spot after a big win against Pope Francis and another uh, win previously against the Terriers. Uh, that game was 2-0 East Long Meadow. So East Long Meadow's, you know, They've started to get on a winning stretch here towards the end of the season. It's really pushed them into the playoffs, and I think they're ready to go. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, East Long Meadow, I believe this season is 2-0 and against West Springfield, but uh, you uh, can't take them lightly. You know, you got to keep your heads up because uh, it's, it's hard to beat a team three times in a season. So um, East Long Meadow's just got to play their game here tonight. Uh, they got a lot of talent, so hopefully they can uh, continue this winning streak here. Absolutely, and it's a little foggy tonight here. Um, visibility is not as clear as we would hope, um, but and it's kind of a little sticky out too. I, yeah. I haven't really liked the weather today at Definitely all. Definitely humid, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it kind of feels like midsummer right now. It'll make for but, some good photos though. Absolutely, oh, for sure, yeah. It's, some photos would be pretty cool tonight. So we're just about to kick things off here. Thank you for joining us if you are on the live stream. If you're not present with us, here tonight at the turf. And East Long Meadow starting with possession on the far sideline. Chad, it is going to be tough looking at these numbers. I mean, oh yeah, I can barely see them in this fog. It's hard when it's without fog, so. I can't even tell who's over there on the sideline right now. I think Merrigan. All right, good call. Merrigan <laughs> crosses it inside towards the 18 and takes a one hop out of bounds on the goal line. I, and will be a goal kick for Ryan Heelan, the Terriers goaltender. Currently, I believe West Springfield has a record of 5-9-2, so definitely under 500, but they were able to sneak their way in and uh, match up with East Long Meadow. And I believe if, if East Long Meadow wins this game, it'll either be Long Meadow or I'm not sure who Long Meadow's playing, but um, I believe that would be the matchup next. Yeah, I believe uh, East Long Meadow is the three seed in their league, and uh, West Springfield, I believe, is the fifth. So, Ball comes all the way back to Dudley and rolls into his hands. And he'll kick his first punt of the evening. Just past midfield, Joe Presnell fighting for it. And a nice head ball by Hall. And now Torres with the ball at midfield passes to Thibodeau. And Thibodeau tries a through ball and it goes all the way to Dudley once again. I believe I played soccer with Jake Thibodeau. I, I recognize the name uh, back in FC Stars, like sixth grade. Some good times back then. And ball nicely cleared out by Owen Hall. As West Springfield looks to gain some possession and ball stolen by Brendan Stone. Joe Presnell working it at midfield. And a foul on the play will go in favor of West Springfield the other way. Patrick Armstrong set to take it for the Terriers. Not a lot to happen uh, in these first two minutes of this game. Um, I mean, both teams definitely coming out with some intensity, but uh, you look to see some op opportunities uh, on the offensive side of things coming up here. Armstrong sends one all the way inside the six and it bounces left of the far post and will be a goal kick for Jack Merrigan of East Longmeadow. And this fog just continues to roll in. I think it's starting to die out a little bit, but it's coming from the right side of the camera out towards the far sideline and the far flag on the left. So hopefully it'll go away soon. I'd say we're probably going to be dealing with it most of the night. Thibodeau trying to work the ball. And it kicks back to Ahmad. And Thibodeau head balls it up to Penra. And now East Lamello trying to steal the possession. And Torres plays out wide to Piacentini. And now Torres. Looking for a through ball. Dudley comes all the way out of his net as Diascoli was there for some backup and a quick punt looking for Oliveri. And a clear goes off his forehead. Diascoli to Riley. Riley plays it all the way back to Dudley. 
And he'll clear towards the middle of the field where it's placed down nicely on the foot of Jacob Melvin. And Owen Hall, a foot race, Ayan Ahmad chasing it down and Dudley dives on it. So far, West Springfield has had the majority of the possession in East Lamello's defensive zone. Yeah, I would say West Springfield has so far impressed me on their ability to control the ball just around midfield. And uh, they're just looking for things to open up and uh, waiting for the right moment. Torres looking for a through ball to Thibodeau. And Thibodeau, Jake Thibodeau making a move, rips a shot and it goes high over the crossbar. But a nice job to create a shooting lane for himself. He made a touch from the right foot and just a quick one on looking for the net with the left. And will be a goal kick for Jack Merrigan. West Springfield's definitely looking to open things up early on here. They've come out with a lot of intensity on the offensive side. And uh, that shot going just a little bit above the net, but uh, just a little bit lower. And uh, that could have been a early or a quick one to start the game. So Jack Merrigan well over midfield and Presnell gets tangled up. And a little bit of patty cake happening in midfield. Jake Thibodeau. Back to Dom Penra. Excuse me, Penna. Joe Presnell with a quick body check. Andrew Oliveri getting involved. Oliveri touches it lightly, looking up the sideline for Presnell. And Presnell, a bit of a miscommunication between the two of them. But it's cleared out of bounds by the West Springfield Terrier. And will result in an East Law Metal throw in for Josh Riley, chested down by Zach Richard. And Torres trying to keep it in, unable to do so. Another throw in for Riley. He looks for Richard again. Joe Presnell works the ball towards the sideline. Oliveri makes a quick cut move. Still with possession, driving inside the 18 box and a whistle on the play on Oliveri. And West Springfield will have a kick going the other way. East Elmetto has got to look to uh, send guys to the net. So uh, Oliveri has some looks for uh, potential crosses and passes. Patrick Armstrong with the, with the free kick. Sky high ball goes off the head of Don Penna. And Chris Torres playing the ball out wide to Brandon Barker. Barker to Ayan Ahmad. And defended by Biggins and will result in a West Springfield throw in Jason Piacentini throwing it in. Dom Penna playing it all the way back to Christian Barker. Barker now to Jake Thibodeau. Thibodeau looking up the sideline. Riley steps up, gets beat. Now Oliveri has to come back and help. And Oliveri does a great job, but his clear is slide tackle blocked by Thibodeau. And again, Christian Barker breaking things up. Joe Presnell takes down Jacob Melvin. West Springfield, a free kick for Patrick Armstrong. 30. Presnell definitely not afraid to use his body. Uh, we'll look out for that tonight. So far, East Long Meadow still a little bit slow offensively. And looks like they're getting a couple players warmed up. Perhaps change up the tempo here. Armstrong looking far post. Dudley coming out of his net and punches it. And a rebound. Kicks all the way back out to Owen Hall. And he's unable to get a foot on it. Piacentini. And Owen Hall chases it out of bounds. And we'll have a throw in. Hall with it on the far sideline. Excuse me, Piacentini will be taking it. West Springfield has had a uh, really even spread in terms of points this season. Only two players with three goals. And uh, other than that, I believe one guy with two and then the rest are one. So uh, definitely able to uh, spread the ball out. So, I mean, every guy in the field is definitely a threat. So you got to watch out for that. And a throw in once again as West Springfield inches down that far sideline deeper and deeper into East Long Meadows defensive zone. And a big throw in. 
trying to head it out is Diascoli and a block shot by Stone. And another shot, a rebound. Dudley comes up with a diving save towards his left. Riley looking to clear and he gets bodied off the ball. Jacob Melvin trying to split two defenders. Oliveri comes back to help and clears. Ball goes out of bounds off of Melvin. East Long Metal throwing. And some subs coming in now for East Long Meadow. Tyler Retchin and Shea McCarthy will check into the game, replacing Brendan Stone and Ryan Richards. Some excellent defensive play there by Riley and Oliveri. Uh, able to take that guy off ball in a dangerous situation for East Long Meadow. Um, an excellent save by Dudley as well. So good to see on the back end of things. Thibodeau, Torres working with each other, and Zach Richard coming in to assist. Mike Monroe. A give and go play with Merrigan on the sideline. And that ball's chased down by Ian Ahmad and cleared out by Piacentini. Ben Biggins in a foot race with Penna. Penna wins the battle and a slide tackle by Biggins. All oh, ball and clean and Penna responds quickly. And chested down by Zach Richard as he plays it out wide to, to Oliveri. Oliveri sends a through ball, one-on-one -on -one battle with Mike Monroe, and he shoved off it. Owen Hall with the defensive play, and he doesn't like the call, but East Long Meadow will have their free, first free kick of the night. I gotta say that I think that was Monroe tripping over the ball. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, it happens both players race, were, yeah. were moving at high speed there, so even just a little bit of contact could yep. definitely stir things Absolutely. up. Absolutely. But uh, West Springfield's had definitely quite a few calls it. so far, so yeah, yeah, I think we'll they're even it out it a little uh, bit. Presnell and Richards set up. Joe Presnell looking far post, he's got a head! And Patsy Diascoli scores, but it's offsides as Diascoli went behind the farthest defenseman. And will be no goal as West Springfield catches a break. That's gotta put some fire in Nissan Meadows heart there, I mean. Getting a goal called back is uh, pretty tough, but um, they'll definitely bring up the intensity. And now uh, they've gotten one, so hopefully they should start flowing in. And it's plays like that that I wish we had replay review because those some of those offside calls are so tough. You know, oh yeah, you're moment. allowed to break the line of play as soon as it comes off the player's foot, but yep. and so the referee, it's tough to watch both sides. I mean, sometimes they're several yards away, so uh -huh. it's very difficult to watch both positions of where the contact, the foot of the ball occurs, and, and the timing that the player breaks the defensive line. So those are always some tough plays to call, but you gotta trust the referees in that position. Yep. So West Springfield catches a quick break, and Tyler Dudley, a punt well past midfield. And uh, off the head of Presnell, wasn't quite expecting it. Oliveri looking inside, and cleared out by Hall. Thibodeau, and now Penna. He looks for Torres. Torres, a lot of space and time. Finally pressured a little bit by Retchin and McCarthy. And now McCarthy looking to get involved as it comes all the way back out. And a save by Dudley. Ahmad gets a clean shot and Dudley with a diving stop. Dudley. Two huge saves so far tonight from clean shots from the Terriers. Dudley really proving himself in net here tonight with two excellent saves. And uh, I mean, can't get much better than that. 100% save percentage right now. And uh, he's going to look to continue that as we move forward through this game. A low laser from Merrigan. Skips right to the foot of Richard. And Thibodeau. Pressured by Zach Richard. And ball is won by East Law Meadow. Thibodeau chasing down Presnell heavily. And Retchen looking to come back with it. Riley turning, looking upfield and finds Oliveri, where he plays towards the sideline, chased down by Monroe, and forces a clear from Owen Hall. And it should be, as it went nicked off the knee of Monroe and will be a West Springfield throw in. And off the head of Jake Thibodeau, chased down by Torres, and Diascoli will clear. Towards the outside, switching fields, Retchen being chased down by Ahmad, and Retchen's cross towards the top of the 18, looking for Presnell, and he can't get a touch on it. 
Thibodeau slips up on the play, unable to, to split the seam. Mike Monroe playing back to McCarthy. And a give and go play. Retchen, Shea McCarthy. And kicks out all the way to Mike Monroe towards the top of the 18. Zach Richard looks to wind up and it's blocked down by the Terriers. If you're just joining us here tonight, we are just past the 26 minute marker here at East Lawn Meadow Stadium. And we still sit at a 0-0 game after East Lawn Meadow had a goal called back. Um, Patsy Diascoli, I believe, off a free kick from Joe Presnell, was called offsides. And a little bit of a wrestling match with Monroe and Armstrong, and Armstrong gets is the beneficiary and will have a free kick. As West Springfield makes their way upfield. So far, East Lomelo doing a better job in the last 10 minutes, moving the ball at midfield and using, switching fields, opening it up a little bit. And it's created some more opportunities for themselves. Monroe's gotten a little bit more involved tonight along with Richard. They were a little quiet in the beginning. Finally get them a few touches and things starting to pick up here for the Spartans. Yeah, East Lawn Meadow definitely starting to turn the tide here as uh, Josh Riley sets up for this throw -in. The captain looking for Presnell. And Presnell gets a little bit tangled up. Thibodeau looking to keep it in with a slide tackle. And Riley once again for the throw in off the head of Monroe and Owen Hall right there back door to make sure that that results in another East Lawn Metal throw in. Riley again. He launches this one up the sideline over the head of Oliveri to Christian Barker. And now Helen scoops it up. No issues at all. And he'll punt this one way short of the midfield mark. A one hop off the sole of Brandon Barker. Mike Monroe able to block it and chasing it down and healing. No problem once again. Back to back punts for Healan. Very similar in location as it goes off the head of Barker. And now a foot race with Riley and Thibodeau. Josh Riley getting goal side position on Thibodeau and able to defend. Thibodeau gets a shot on that. Dudley, another diving save. Jack Merrigan finishes off the job as he clears it out of bounds. West Springfield Terriers with a corner kick. Tyler Dudley has just been outstanding tonight. Three huge saves for East Lawn Meadow and he's just really coming up big so far. Dudley is locked in and definitely ready was ready for this game as he comes up with a huge save, keeping it 0-0. The cross from Torres, all the way far post and cleared out by Merrigan. And now a full race, Mike Monroe using his speed and touched out of bounds, Christian Barker. And throw in, Des Rociers, Zach Richard to Mike Monroe. Monroe looking to cut towards the middle and it's blocked nicely by a Terrier defender. Zach Richard spinning around 360 and looks towards the sideline to Sam Hanley. His first appearance of the night, Joe Presnell looking across towards the far post and he scores, Zach Richard. Barry's one for East Long Meadow with 22 minutes remaining in the first half. Richard puts the Spartans up 1-0. Just a huge defensive breakdown there for the Terriers. East Long Meadow had several opportunities to put that ball away and they finally got it in. And just a good finish by Richards. So you like to see that moving forward. Hopefully East Long Meadow can start to bury a few more after that first goal getting called back. They follow through here and uh, we sit at the 22.05 mark here in this first half. It is a one-nothing game here. 
You and saw Meadow Sparrins leading. They're going to credit the assist to Joe Presnell. Goal scored by Zach Richard. We have a 1 0 soccer game. And just some great ball movement. Not That was a very unselfish play between the Spartans offense. I mean, a quick, two quick touch passes, oh, yeah. and it opened up the space and left a wide open shot for Richard, and he snipes one. Yeah, just a little bit of a touch, but able to find the right spot, and uh, nobody home, and, and Monroe was right there to make sure that that thing went in, but Richard's Richard credited with the goal. Yeah, you really like to see it, uh, just unselfish ball movement, and uh, they're looking for the guaranteed goal there, so uh, there wasn't one guy looking to take the low percentage shot for the highlight tape, it was just a bunch of guys working together there on that offensive end, and you really like to see that in the, coming into the playoffs. And now Esau Meadow, an offside call by Monroe, Owen Hall and Monroe exchanging a few words. And will be a free kick for the Terriers. Armstrong will take it for West Springfield. And he sends it into a lot of traffic where it finds the head of Diascoli. And Retchen, Joe Presnell chased down by Barker. Played out wide to Retchen and Piacentini. A one-on-one -on -one battle with Retchen, and he's able to win it. And a call on Retchen. West Springfield with a free kick once again for Patrick Armstrong. Student section a little bit light here tonight. I'm expecting more people, especially since the girls' game was at 4 o'clock today. And volleyball also was at six, so a lot of people should be done with their events and coming to support the boys. But it's starting to fill in gradually. Yeah, I expect so to see some more people. A substitution being made. Gus Mazza stepping in here for Captain Michael Monroe, and Michael has had a solid start here to this game. Let's see what Gus Mazza can do. Yeah, Mazza, his first appearance of the night. And an unsub as well for West Springfield. Jake Thibodeau checks back in, replacing Ayan Ahmad. And off the head of Armstrong. Merrigan oh, clears that volley. And to Mitchell. Excuse me. Des Rociers. And Jack Merrigan to the middle to Richard. He mishandles it a little bit, but is able to gain control again and find Retchen. To Mazza. Mazza looking back over towards the sideline to Retchen, and his pass comes all the way back to Dudley as he quickly rolls it towards the foot of Oliveri, and Oliveri's got some space as he was pursued by Des Rociers. Joe Presnell. Outside to Tyler Retchen, and defended nicely as West Springfield making their way back upfield, Dom Penna taken down. Esau Meadow in a dangerous situation right here. I've seen West Side as a threat here tonight from those deep free kicks, and uh, they've been able to put it to the far post pretty effectively. So we'll see what they do here. I believe Penna will be taking it for West Springfield. As they line up outside the 18. And the kick from Penna. A low laser, a one hop. And Dudley gets a hand on it. And will result in a Terrier corner kick. Another opportunity here. Those skippers can definitely get dangerous on wet turf, take some unexpected bounces. So uh, it's a good thing that went just wide for Esau Meadow. And it is nice, the fog has finally cleared up here at the turf. So visibility is much easier, at least for us. Identifying the players and the sub now coming in for East Lamello, Shane Smith will be replacing Shea McCarthy and another sub for West Springfield. That's Des Rociers. 
will be replaced by number eight. That's Mitchell, Michael Dunn. And the clear from West Springfield, Penna, M Mitchell. And now Dunn. Sam Hanley trying a pullback move as Dunn goes for the slide tackle. Joe Presnell settles it down and makes a smart play towards Richard as he heads it. And a change of fields, Christian Barker looking at the top of the 18 for his teammate and now Dunn. Joe Presnell, a rollback move and able to create some space for himself as he cuts towards the middle. And a flop. A flop by Jacob Melvin. I mean, Presnell had the ball. I'm not really sure how he could have. I think he was definitely just trying to lay some contact there. So I guess uh, Presnell's just a little, got a little bit of Marshawn Lynch in him tonight. <laughs> And a sky high free kick. And Owen Hall gets one on net. And Dudley has to come up with a save. 15.50 remaining in the first half. East Law Meadow up 1-0 thanks to the Zach Richard goal. And Retchen looking for a teammate. Dudley has to come all the way out. And we'll scoop this one up and allow his team to reset. Dudley's punt past the midfield mark and over the head of Mazza as he looks to chase it down. And Heelan is just going to clear it out of bounds and a sub coming in now for East Lomito. Mike Monroe coming back into the game replacing Gus Mazza. And for the Terriers, Mitchell will be replaced by Chris Torres. Mike Monroe, one on two battle. And Armstrong clears up top for Penna as he chases it down. And Ben Biggins defends nicely. Jack Merrigan looking for a through ball and a little too much mustard on it. And it's gonna hop right into the hands of Heelan. And Heelan's punt. Off the head of Zach Richard, Joe Presnell. Able to, def to have body position and now some nice ball movement from East Long Meadow and they're gonna call Monroe off sides. And West Springfield will have a free kick once again. Still sitting at a one nothing game here as we approach the 14 minute mark here in this first half. East Long Meadow Definitely starting to show some do dominance on the offensive side of things, but uh, Westside has definitely still been able to control the ball pretty effectively, and uh, they'll look to get things going as well as Tyler Dudley has come up with three huge saves tonight. And Merrigan getting tangled up with Thibodeau. Spits out to Torres. Torres gets a shot, and Dudley diving to his left once again, able to control the rebound after it bounced off his chest as Desrosiers was right there to bang it home. Excuse me, Dunn was there. Make that four big saves tonight. Yeah. Dudley has been a stud in that. Yeah, I mean, you know, maybe people didn't think that Dudley would be the one starting for East Law Metal tonight, but I mean, he has showed that he is earning this role. Coming up big in this first half, keeping East Law Metal in the lead. Absolutely, yeah. Um, the last few games, I believe they split. So uh, uh, AJ Morgado, that is, and Tyler Dudley. So uh, we'll see what the coaching staff does here tonight. Ben Biggins, his shin guard falls out, and Dudley comes all the way out to retrieve it on the right side of the 18 box. And Dudley will have a free punt. That one goes high in the air, takes a one-hop bounce, and then off the head of Piacentini. And oh my goodness. That is a ridiculous foul. Cannot do that. 
Definitely cannot do that. <laughs> Shane Smith goes down hard, and those are always scary to watch when yeah. the player just kind of loses control of their body in the air and Lands comes down hard. Yeah. But he seems to be all right, and a free kick for Merrigan. And he'll send one towards the top of the PK mark, looking for the head of Monroe. Monroe gets a head on it. And it does go on net, and Heelan has to come up with a save as that ball slowly floated towards the goal line. Heelan, his punt goes right to the foot of Smith. Mike Monroe, switching fields, looking for overlapping Sam Hanley. And now Zach Richard. He'll split the defenders as it's chased down by Rech and Pia Centini aggressively pursuing and should be an East Long Metal throw in. Substitutions being made here. I believe Shea McCarthy coming in here for Shane Smith. And then uh, number seven, Ayana Maud checks in here for uh, number eight, Dunn. And a throw in. Monroe fighting for it. And will be another East Long Metal throw in. Jack Merrigan set to take it for the Spartans. And he'll throw it off the head of Monroe as it comes all the way towards the PK mark. And Sam Hanley buries it. Hanley in the perfect position. After it goes off of the head of Monroe, Sam Hanley, that one's got to feel good. Just a great finish by Hanley there. Volleys it out of the air and uh, buries it for his third goal of the season here. He sits at four points this season. And uh, he's been due for one. He's just been having some great games recently, and uh, you like to see that there no on that left wing. Number 21 for East Long Meadow, Samuel Hanley in the right place at the right time. And he comes in clutch and puts East Long Meadow up 2 0 with 10.32 remaining in the first half. I believe it was assisted by Mike Monroe, picking up his sixth assist, assist of the season. East Long Meadow goal scored by number 21, Sam. And McCarthy goes up and over the back of Barker. And Armstrong will have a free kick for West Springfield. Armstrong. Sky high. Top of the 18. Torres. In a battle. Looking to get a shot. And it's blocked by McCarthy. Again, Torres pushing McCarthy. And East Long Meadow will get the call. Torres looks to be in a bit of a limp. As... Jack Merrigan gets set to take the free kick for East Long Meadow. And he'll send a bullet. Looking to break the defensive line. Sam Hanley chasing it down on his dominant side. And it goes through the foot of Monroe. Monroe in a one on three battle. Hanley stepping up to help out. And will result in a West Springfield goal kick. Some nice ball movement between Monroe and Hanley. Also just a great boot by Merrigan to get that ball up there. Kid's really got a leg. Definitely using him as a valuable weapon, especially on the free kicks in the offensive zone. I mean, that, was, that last goal was set up by Merrigan. Didn't and, catch who uh, went in for him, but I believe Joe Presnell was just subbed out. And now Mike Monroe. Bodied off by Armstrong, and Monroe, another whistle on the play. I'm not quite sure that was all the way out, but obviously the referee has a better view than us from down there. So, Oh, actually, I believe it'll be a free kick. That's why. So the referee's not really letting East Lamedo play it out. I mean, that was... Yeah, just a little physicality, and uh, they're making the call. So off they're the calling head a tight game tonight, so... As long as it's for both sides, it's all right. <laughs> and a throw in now from Barker. Oh. And another, free, I believe another wow. free kick for West Springfield Armstrong. 
you're just joining us here, we sit at the eight minute mark. He summed it up two to nothing here after the recent goal by Sam Hanley, assisted by Mike Monroe. Patrick Armstrong. Sky high once again, a big boot looking for the far post as it trickles into the hands of Dudley. No contact made by any of the teams and Dudley right there to ensure no damage happens. And his punt over the head of Zach Richard. Armstrong heads it back to the foot of Richard as he switches fields. Chased down by Sam Hanley on the near sideline. Hanley with a crossover scissors move. Able to beat Barker and taken down inside the 18. Should be a PK. I believe it will be. That's got it, yep. The ref is pointing to the line. And it will be a penalty shot for Sam Hanley. He will look to pick up his second of the night here with some great hustle there off the wing. Hanley. Doesn't give up on the ball and it's gonna work out for him as he looks to put East Long Meadow up three nothing with this penalty kick. Just a great move to the inside. He beat his defender and uh, out of desperation the guy made a slide tackle hoping he was outside of the box still and he wasn't so Hanley stepping up here for East Long Meadow. Heelan looking to keep this a two nothing game. Hanley. Staring on to Heelan, approaches, shoots, and buries it bottom right corner. Sam Hanley puts East Long Meadow up 3 0 with 6.26 remaining in the first half. His second of the night. And just like that, Sam Hanley jumps from two goals on the season to four. He is having a game tonight. And a timeout called by West Springfield. Definitely needs some time to regroup. But still a lot of game left to be played and anything can happen. This game is certainly not over. I mean, West Springfield is definitely a talented team, so we'll see if they can make a run, but East Long Meadows just gotta keep, continue to play the way they have been in the last 25 minutes, because they've definitely been dominating this. They came out a little bit slow. It was a little bit, you know, rough to watch. Uh, not too much offense, it was a lot of keeping the ball in their own def defensive zone, just trying to clear, but they finally found the rhythm and the composure is there. And they've able to bury three in the first half. Yeah, you saw Meadows sitting with a lot of momentum here. Just can't let it, the lead get to their heads, keep playing the same way they have been. And uh, they'll look to continue to dominate against the West Springfield Terriers here with the three nothing lead. Just the intensity from Esau Meadow has been great. And a lot of people, as we've seen recently, Hanley not giving up on the ball, and it's going to cash in for East Long Meadow. And the Terriers certainly taking their needed time to discuss things over in the huddle. I'm shocked that the refs have not blown the whistle yet. There Finally, it is. they do. As they look to break up this party going on on the sideline and finally changes things up. Six and a half minutes remaining here in this first half. If you're just joining us, Sam Hanley just cashed in on his second of the night and Esau Meadows sits here with a three nothing lead. It's two straight from Hanley. Off of the PK for that last one. Monroe flying, applying some quick pressure. Thibodeau, chased down by Smith. And now up the line, Thibodeau. Oliveri, able to kick it out of bounds and Thibodeau will have a quick throw in for the Terriers. As he loads up to launch this one. Jake Thibodeau, fires this one well inside the 18. So it goes off the head of Penna. And Torres chasing it down, but it's cleared by McCarthy. And Tyler Retchen also there to assist. And ball goes out of bounds. Goal kick for Jack Merrigan. Throwing from Westside giving me uh, Dante Bates flashbacks. Oh yeah, a valuable weapon that East Lomelo lost last year as he was a senior. But I mean, Dante could just absolutely launch the ball. I mean, I mean he could find the far post from this near sideline. 
Oh, yeah. Ten, nine times out of ten. I mean, it was unbelievable to watch. And I honestly, I think it's it really helped East Law Metal make it as far as they did in, the, in both tournaments, state and Western Mass. Absolutely. Every player on the team just knew their role. And uh, it definitely worked out for the guys all playing since a young age. So obviously we got a different group this year. But we sit at a 3-0 game here in Western Mass playoffs. And uh, they seem to really, or they've started to really mold as a uh, team here. So, And some nice sportsmanship like there as Hanley took down Thibodeau. But they shake hands and make up for things. Mike Monroe is pushed off the ball by Hall, a full arm extension. And Monroe trying to keep it in and unable to do so. Throw in for the Terriers. And that will be Barker taking it as he looks for Torres. And up comes Shane Smith as Armstrong looks towards the far sideline to switch fields to Pia Centini. Tyler Retchen. A one-on-one -on -one with Piacentini. Piacentini again looks to clear and whiffs. Tyler Retchen. Substitution coming in here for Islam Meadow. It is Zach Richard checking into the game here for Shane Smith coming out. Shane Smith getting a nice applause as he jogs to the sideline. Jack Merrigan throwing it in. A one-hop goes to the head of Monroe. Torres looking to clear and unable to do so as it was touched back to the foot of Pia Centini and he finishes the job. And should be a throw in for East Long Meadow. Jack Mirgan on that far sideline. Off the head of Retchen and Ahmad. Jack Mirgan. Pursuing well into the offensive zone as Retchen has to step back to cover him. And McCarthy and Torres going up for it. Jack Merrigan finally gets back and able to break up the pass. Zach Richard with a little bit of shake and bake action. And Tyler Retchen looking to the middle of the field to Presnell as he one touches it to Diascali and Diascali doing the same to Oliveri. Oliveri settles and looks for Hanley on the sideline. Some nice passing here from East Long Meadow. Penna pursuing Presnell, but he's able to get away. A cut inside, a bit of a screen from Presnell allows Hanley to move towards midfield. Zach Richard finds Merrigan. Merrigan pulling up. And now Zach Richard switching fields once again to Oliveri. Sam Hanley with the ball on the near sideline. Cuts to the middle again, where he looks to find Monroe. Monroe back to Hanley. Some great composure from East Long Meadow, and ball finally kicked out of bounds by Barker. Just some real impressive ball movement there from East Long Meadow. Just reminds me of some professional soccer, honestly. Yeah, that was really cool to watch, honestly. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. A lot of, they were using, they're setting up in triangles and moving the ball really well, splitting defenders and. That was good to watch. You love to see things starting to click, especially in the late postseason. Yeah, you saw Meadow really starting to peak as a team here, and that's what you look to get as a uh, as a team moving on into playoffs. So, and a through ball from Retchen looking for Presnell, and it's broken up by Barker. Zach Richard, Sam Hanley, with his big left foot, as he makes a cut move. Towards the inside, the 18, a one-on-one -on -one with Barker. Finds a cross, looks for the head of Monroe. And it goes high over the crossbar. Hanley just really making plays here for the team tonight. As he's able to get his hips around that ball and send it to the middle towards Monroe. Just to, if he was just able to get a little bit more over that ball, could we have are, probably buried it, so. We are under the two minute mark as the remainder of the time for the first half will be kept on the field. Barker looking to clear up. And Penna just standing there watch, watching motionless. Chris Torres to Jacob Thibodeau. Thibodeau up the line to Penna, and Penna looking for a one-touch back to Thibodeau. And Shea McCarthy 
breaks up that pass. Sam Hanley, a cutback scissor move. Joe Presnell makes another move. Pursuing on the sideline, excuse me, the goal line. And his pass goes off of West Springfield Terrier and into the hands of Helan. His punt off the head of McCarthy. And now Mike Monroe shielded off by Armstrong and Helan will have another punt. And this one, bit of a muff off the back of the head of Presnell and goes to Biggins. Ben Biggins playing towards Hanley and now Jacob Thibodeau playing up the sideline, chased down by Penna and kept in. His cross, looking for Ahmad and Penna finding Ahmad and West Springfield has their first of the evening. 3-1 now and you could just kind of tell East Law Meadow was not aggressive at all. Kind of let Penna take his time on the sideline, keep the ball in. They didn't really apply any pressure. They're kind of looking towards the halftime, but that's where they're going to get you. That's where they're going to bite you. And the Terriers able to get one before the half. Yeah, East Law Meadow definitely let up a little bit on their intensity, and uh, now West Springfield is able to narrow the gap as uh, they call the half almost directly after that goal is scored. So. Obviously, not much time was remaining. And uh, yeah, I would definitely like to know what the, the referees had on their timers because that definitely seemed like a exaggerated two minutes. Um, I don't know if they're in the playoffs. I'm not sure if they if they call it exactly or if they call it. Yeah, they're definitely going to let the team with the with possession, especially if you're going yeah, on if a rush like that. There's an opportunity. I believe that they um, let them play. I think I think when they. Uh, they call referee time. I believe they let them play until the opportunity is, uh, has finished. And so at the half, score is 3-1 in favor of the Spartans. Sam Hanley with two. And Zach Richard had the first of the night as we go into halftime. I mean, so far, East Lone Metal definitely dominated that first half. The first 10 minutes, they came out a little bit slow. But they were able to get things going. And certainly, as it shows, put up three goals. And West Springfield responds with like 10 seconds remaining. And um, it's going to be, definitely feels good for them to cut the lead down to two as a three goal lead is definitely tough. But two goal leads are some of the toughest lead to hold in any kind of sport. And I believe we're going to get a first hand uh, fan experience here from Connor Robert. Yeah, you saw Meadow. Uh Great wide receiver for uh, football, so let's hear it. Connor Robidoux, fresh out of the student section. Thank you for having me, Connor. So, uh, Robidoux, I mean, how's the how's the energy tonight so far? You know, we uh, student section start off a little slow. Uh, you know, we uh, obviously had the girls' game before this. Guy, uh, some guys come for practice, but uh, once we got everybody in there, we were pretty electric. You know, uh, saw some great plays out there on the field, uh, and we're all just excited for the second half. And yeah, definitely a lot of aggressive play out of East Lawn Meadow. I mean, Sam Hanley not giving up on the ball and. Able to make things happen, drawing a penalty inside the 18, gets his second of the night off the PK. And I mean, I, I don't know if you noticed, but like at like right, right around the five minute mark, East Lone Metal looked like a professional soccer team. I mean, they were moving the ball so well at midfield, switching it up, and it, it, it was just a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, we uh, we were able, we pointed out too up in the students section that the uh, just passing and everything looks, looked a lot crisper tonight. You know, a lot of guys looked locked in. Um, especially big first half for Sam, you know, like for a guy who had two goals all year to net, net two in this first half to give his team a big three-on lead. Absolutely. Uh, it was big to see. It was big to see. So thank you so much for joining us here, Connor. There was eight minutes remaining in the, in the halftime. We'll see you then. Welcome back to East Long Middle High School for the quarterfinal playoff matchup between the West Springfield Terriers and the East Long Middle Spartans. East Long Middle currently leading 3-1 after a very strong first half. And they look to extend their lead and shut this one out and advance to the semifinal game. But West Springfield able to cash in on a late first half goal, probably with under five seconds remaining. Honestly, the referees were probably just letting them play it out the last few seconds because they had a rush. And a through ball from Ryan Richards looking for Monroe. And it spits out to Joe Presnell as he looks to make things happen 
Ryan Richards with a great look towards the middle of the field. And Monroe almost gets a foot on it. A little bit jammed up. And Heelan catching a break from his defensive line. East Salt Meadow just really coming out high in the first 30 seconds of the second half. They're up 3-1, but uh, after that goal, it definitely uh, woke them up a little bit and um, realized that they hadn't had this game in the bag already. So Ryan Richards trying to pursue, and now Jack Merrigan. And ball comes all the way back. And Ahmad switching fields as he looks to find Torres, and Torres dances with it a little bit. Thibodeau applying some pressure along with Barker. And now Mike Monroe chasing it down as Heelan has to come all the way out. And it, his clear goes off the head of Presnell. And now Penna towards Ahmad. Ahmad's got some space as Merrigan was applying pressure. Ahmad looks to get a shot and it's deflected out of bounds off of Diascoli. West Springfield will have their first corner kick of the half. Mr. Smith with some words of encouragement. And the cross from Ahmad. Towards the short post. And goes out of bounds, I believe. That was off of Richards. Ryan Richards holding down the front post as Ahmad gets set. And a lot of traffic in front of that post. And referee sorting a few things out. Ahmad set to cross, this time looking far post. And it goes off the head of Barker and out of bounds on the goal line will be a goal kick for Jack Merrigan. If you're just joining us in the second half, it's just kicked off and East Law Meadow leads 3-1. Goal scorers, Sam Hanley has two on the night and Zach Richard adds one himself. And a throw in now for Josh Riley on that far sideline. And it comes all the way to Jacob Melvin. And he can't find any feet. And Riley will have a throw in. Student section definitely filled up for the Spartans. Getting a little bit more support as people start to finish up their athletic events. Girls previously today at four o'clock beat Westfield 1-0 to advance to the, to the semifinal game in their tournament. I believe uh, East Summit of Volleyball also caught a win here tonight. I'm not sure who it was against, but also a Western Mass tournament game. And over the head is Diascoli. He chases it down, looking to clear. And Torres applying pressure, forcing the ball out of bounds. Jack Merrigan with the goal kick for East Longmeadow. Things starting off a little bit slow here in the second half for both teams. Both looking to certainly get things going. There's a little bit of a spike of energy Right in the beginning, Jack Merrigan steps up on Ahmad and gets a lot of ball, but definitely shook up Ahmad there. I mean, we know Merrigan's got a big foot. And Ahmad, very slow to get up. But he seems to be all right. Ahmad is the goal scorer for West Springfield tonight from the cross from Penna. And Armstrong will have the free kick. Armstrong 
Sends this one toward the left side of the 18 box. Ahmad. You saw Meadow definitely catching a break there as uh, Merrigan makes the quick, quick switch right before the free kick was taken to cover Ahmad, and he was able to body him off ball. A nice defensive play as that ball results out of bounds here for a goal kick for Merrigan. Jack Merrigan winds up. And sends that one past the midfield bark, headed down by Pia Centini, and looked to clear by Biggins, blocked down by Ahmad, and now it's sub coming in for East La Meadow. Shea McCarthy will be replacing Brendan Stone. And now the throw in for Merrigan. Off the neck of Monroe. And volleyed back in by Jacob Melvin. Melvin putting it back into pressure. Merrigan's clear right off the face of Melvin. And now Zach Richard looking to make things happen for East Long Meadow. Joe Presnell going with the safe route and playing back to Josh Riley as he looks for the overlap. And Oliveri unable to find Riley. And a slide tackle made by Diascoli forces that ball out of bounds. And West Springfield will have a throw in on that far sideline. Still a three to one game here as we are at the 33 minute mark here in the second half. Esau Meadow with the lead off of two goals from Sam Hanley and a goal to start the game from. And a throw in, a lot of hopping and Merrigan saves that one from crossing the goal line and a shot from I believe and there is a West Springfield player down at the six. I believe that's Penna, and he definitely is a little bit shaken up. He's holding on to his left thigh and will limp out of the 18. And he will be replaced by number two. Billy Stachowicz. And now finally the punt from Dudley as it was a little bit stalled from Penna's injury. Mike Monroe working the other way. Presnell applying pressure and it's cleared out by Mitchell. And goes out of bounds off of an East Law Meadow player. A throw in now for West Springfield. East Law Meadow definitely has been letting off the gas a little bit. They can't get too lazy about this lead. As we saw, they are caught off guard towards the end of the first half by a Terrier goal. And a throw in for Josh Riley on the far sideline, just around the midfield mark. And it goes off of McCarthy. And will go the other way. Quick pump fake from Armstrong. And he goes up the sideline looking for, I believe that's Mitchell, but I could be wrong. It's a bit dark over there on that far sideline corner. And a throw in for West Springfield defender. And Ahmad has some space. Looks to get a chip shot on net. Taken down inside the 18 by Biggins. But the shot goes sailing over the top of the net. And Ben Biggins with the goal kick for East Long Meadow. And Penna checks back into the game for Statuitz. East Long Meadow has uh, left Dudley in the game here in the second half, um, which isn't typical. Usually they split games, um, or usually Morgado starts. So uh, that's just the coach and staff looking and seeing that uh, Dudley has really proved himself tonight with some big saves there in the first half. And uh, the only goal he let up wasn't really much he could have done about it. it was just a cross right to the middle and a quick shot on that, so. Armstrong clears out of bounds and a throw in for Jack Merrigan. Right, 
And now, Jacob Melvin looking towards the middle. And picked off by Joe Presnell. Tyler Retchen switches fields for Oliveri. And it's headed out by number 33, I think. Or tw it might be 23. Billy Flaherty. Flaherty. And now ball flying up towards the midfield mark. Ben Biggins heads it towards the sideline looking for Oliveri. And the ball exits the playing field. Josh Riley. And now Oliveri. Back to McCarthy and a clear up from Riley. Looks for Monroe. And West Springfield has possession. Bark and some upset fans as another whistle blown. Armstrong will have another free kick for West Springfield. Twenty-eight forty remaining in regulation. Score is three to one in favor of the Spartans. Armstrong. Winds up and chips it towards the post and inside the box. Jacob Melvin putting on a bit of a show. Nice scoop up there by Dudley to prevent the corner kick and also a good defensive play there by Biggins. Piacentini looking towards his offense and now Josh Riley playing towards the sideline to Oliveri. And he can't keep it in. And a quick throw in transition by Flaherty. Flaherty playing up the sideline. And now looking through the seam. Head ball. Joe Presnell wins the battle at midfield as he's chased down by Melvin. And now Flaherty coming up again for West Springfield as he looks up the sideline to Melvin. And a quick throw in. Melvin chasing it towards the far flag. As he crosses towards the top of the 18 mark. Tyler Retchen clearing in. Zach Richard there to clean things up. Mike Monroe allows the ball to go over his head. Applies some quick pressure on Heelan, forcing him to play it up quickly to Barker. Chase down, Torres on Biggins. Oliveri, a little bit of contact and he's able to win the battle, tripped up again, able to stay with the ball. Joe Presnell, working at midfield, plays out wide, switching it to Retchen. Retchen one on one with Pia Santini, finds Presnell. Presnell looking back and it's stolen by Armstrong as he looks to clear a quick pull, back move to reset himself and he goes up the sideline and out of bounds. Throw in now for Jack Merrigan as Armstrong was looking for Penna. He's starting to pick up their momentum a little bit more now. You could see in the body language at, towards the uh, end of that second half and the beginning of this first that uh, people were looking a little bit down. But uh, the intensity is definitely starting to pick back up. Torre, er, Torres clears it up and Biggins has to play back to Dudley. And now McCarthy Touches it back to Biggins as he takes out the trash. And Presnell plays towards the sideline to Oliveri. Oliveri looking to switch fields and it goes to the chest of Piacentini as he chips it to Barker. And possible handball, no call. Zach Richard, one on one with Chris Torres and he's able to win the battle as he passes it back to Merrigan. Retchen, Presnell with a bit of a trickery play. Allows it to go through his legs. A cutback move creates a lot of space now for Shea McCarthy. McCarthy playing towards the sideline to Andrew Oliveri as he crosses inside towards the top of the 18 mark. Presnell back to Richard. McCarthy and Oliveri. Oliveri going up for the head ball, unable to get a piece of it. And now West Springfield looking to make it the other way, but Josh Riley steps up. Esau Middle able to keep possession. Jack Merrigan plays to the foot of Joe Presnell. And a give and go finds the foot of Retchen. 
Retchen with a cutback move on Ahmad, and he looks to clear towards the top of the 18. Zach Richard. Some bit of a congestion outside the 18, and Islam unable to get any scoring opportunity. Mike Monroe chasing it down, and Armstrong quickly clears. Ball chased down by Melvin. Melvin flying around. Excuse me, Thibodeau flying around. And now Ahmad chasing it down with Biggins. A one-on-one -on -one battle, and Biggins comes up with it. And a foul on Ahmad as Biggins goes down and will be an East Long Meadow free kick. Can't really be upset by that call. They've been calling it all night. So uh, any, any bit of contact on those high-speed plays, the ref has been blowing the whistle. So, And Penna shares a few words with the referee of his disapproval. Jack Marion fires this one down the center of the field, and it goes off the head of Owen Hall. And now Heelan has to come all the way out of his net and grab the ball and allows his team to reset. 23-30 remaining in regulation. East Law Meadow currently holds the lead with a score of three to one. Ben Biggins looks to clear and launches this one way out of bounds. And now West Springfield looking to adjust. Chris Torres exits the game for West Springfield. And Josh Riley also exiting the game for East Longmeadow. We sit at the 23 minute mark here. East Longmeadow still sitting at three to one after a goal by the Terriers at the end of the first half. Thibodeau. And his pass is broken up by Biggins as he sends a laser off the toe of Monroe. Mike Monroe, a one-on-one -on -one battle and now Armstrong, Monroe applying pressure, and it goes off of Monroe and should be a throw in for Piacentini of West Springfield. Piacentini goes right to the foot of Merrigan, and now Mitchell, and a shot about 25 yards out. Misses the net. I believe that was, might have been Owen Hall on the shot. And I have absolutely no idea what is going on right now. Free kick. Uh, free kick for West Springfield. Armstrong set to take it. West Springfield spreads themselves out on top of the 18 box. Armstrong, a chip shot looking towards the six, and it kicks out all the way to Barker as he looks to volley it on net, and it's blocked. Armstrong fighting through traffic, and he's now forced towards the sideline. And his cross, Patsy Diascoli clearing. And Owen Hall playing nicely to Barker. Barker with some space, makes a cut move towards the middle, looking for Ahmad. And Dudley chasing it down, and it will result in a corner kick for West Springfield. West Springfield definitely has some momentum here. East Lomel has got to clear. I believe Dudley thought that was off of West Springfield, and he let it go. Ayan Ahmad adjusting his shoes and getting set to take the corner kick for West Springfield. Ahmad looks far post, looking for Thibodeau. And ball spits all the way back out to Armstrong where his clear is blocked down by Monroe. He stumbles, a two on two going the other way. Monroe switches fields to Presnell as he looks to settle a head ball to Monroe and he takes down Armstrong. And Owen Hall, Ayan Ahmad working with the ball on the sideline. Penna looks to Play towards Ahmad. And now Zach Richard switching fields nicely. 
And here comes Sam Hanley as he drops the ball back to Richard, excuse me, Presnell. And Owen Hall steals the ball and makes his way upfield. Thibodeau to Penna. And now Mitchell as he looks for Ahmad and it's broken up by Diascoli. Zach Richard with a lot of real estate around midfield. He looks towards the far post, excuse me, the far corner flag as Hanley chases it down. A little too much gas behind that cross. And we'll have a throw in for the Terriers. And a clear to the foot of Richard. Batted down by McCarthy. And Diascoli and Biggins holding their line. Joe Presnell plays out wide to Hanley. Sam Hanley with that strong left foot plays towards the middle to Zach Richard. Ben Biggins relays it over to Jack Merrigan. And pass broken up by Ayan Ahmad as he makes his way back off field. Jack Merrigan applying some pressure, forcing Ahmad out wide. And his cross, not a lot on it. And Merrigan is going to go the safe route and punch that one out of bounds and will force the Terriers to have a throw in. Some nice defensive teamwork there by uh, Biggins and Merrigan. Merrigan able to recover, and then uh, Biggins there to back him up and they uh, make the play on a speedy uh, kid like Ahmad, so it's definitely good to see that angle in him off there. Mitchell, excuse me, not Mitchell. Flaherty throws that one in, and Piacentini, Jacob Thibodeau, looking for the volley kick on net and sails it wide and right. Some substitutions coming in for East Long Meadow as well as West Springfield. Number 21, Chris Torres stepping in for uh, number 20, Mitchell. And um, Shane Smith stepping in for Joe Presnell for East Long Meadow. And Zach Richard in a bit of a battle of Flaherty, unable to win it. Biggins looking for someone at the midfield mark. Chris Torres. Tyler Retchen and Shea McCarthy. And Shane Smith jogging with the ball. And he finds Hanley on the sideline as he looks up the line looking for Richard and deflected out of bounds off of a terrier. And will be a throw in now for Andrew Oliveri on that far sideline. Shane Smith has to come back to help out Patsy Diascoli. Looking to clear in now Penna. And that clear is blocked down by Biggins. And now Diascoli with some real estate as he plays to Retchen. Retchen up the line to Monroe. Mike Monroe's got some space. Gets some goal side positioning. Gets a shot. And Healing with an unbelievable save on Monroe. Prevents the goal and the lead from increasing to three. Healing just really coming up big for West Springfield. This next goal is just going to be probably very indicative of how this game is going to go as Joe Presnell steps in there for Shea McCarthy. And Zach Richard, Shane Smith, Ben Biggins receives the clear from the Terriers and tries to switch fields over to Hanley and places that ball out of the playing field. Terriers with a quick throw in Penna, looking to go the other way with Thibodeau. And now a throw in for Flaherty. And, uh, and West Springfield will call timeout, timeout here. Timeout. We sit at just over 15 and a half minutes here, three to one game. Michael Monroe with the opportunity just a moment ago what do you think so far, Brady? I mean, East Long Meadow, like, like just kind of similar to the first half. They, they started out very slow. And there's definitely been some times here where West Springfield has had a lot more possession in their offensive zone. But I, so far, I think this, this half has been 50-50. I mean, both teams have had 
some good scoring opportunities and both goalies coming up with good saves. Um, I mean, so far, pretty even, but East Elementals definitely got to keep their foot on the gas here. You know, they can't get let the, the two-goal lead get into their head too much because there's still a lot of time remaining on that clock. Fifteen and a half minutes is a lot of time, and anything can really happen. I mean, this is just bringing me back to last year, uh, I believe, in either... I might have been the semifinals, but, um, I mean, East Law Meadow was down three goals going into the second half and came back and won it in shootouts. I mean, anything can happen in soccer, and uh, a two-goal lead, one of the toughest leads to hold in any sport. So they've got to just continue to keep the intensity up, keep their composure, and finish this one off. Yeah, definitely. There's uh, in, Here in the second half, there's definitely been um, some lapses in East Law Meadow's intensity, and we're not seeing quite as much dominance as we saw towards the end of second half there for East Elm Meadow, but uh, obviously someone was looking to keep this lead to two and uh, hopefully advance to the semifinals here in this Western Mass tournament. I believe we will have... I think a corner. Yeah, uh, I think a throw-in. Oh. Flaherty is all the way over in that far sideline. Oh, I didn't see. All right. And he'll launch this one inside the 18, off the head. Diascoli looking to clear in Torres. And Shane Smith coming back to help. Sam Hanley finds the foot of Zach Richard as he has the overlapping wretch in and unable to find him, but finds the other side with Hanley as Hanley looks now for wretch in. And Owen Hall able to clear. And now a pass, Tyler Retchen. Defended nicely by Owen Hall. And Retchen trying to keep that ball in. And it should have gone off of a Terrier. I think it did go off a Terrier, but the referee will signal a goal kick and he will call Shane Smith over with some words for him. Sit under just under 15 minutes here. Goal kick for the Terriers. Armstrong. Just short of the midfield mark off the head of Joe Presnell. Ben Biggins stepping up on Penna. And it kicks all the way back to Flaherty as he launches one up to Ahmad. Tyler Dudley has to come out of his net and able to get a leg on it. Prevent Ahmad from having a breakaway. Zach Richard. To Joe Prezel, one touch back to the foot of McCarthy. And now out wide to Oliveri. Sam Hanley, a one-on-one -on -one with Flaherty on the far sideline. Joe Presnell chipping it up, looking for a teammate and nobody home, but it does go out of bounds off of Flaherty. And a throw in now for Andrew Oliveri. Looking back at that big step up for uh, Dudley. Kid has just been outstanding tonight and uh, made the right decision. Um, Ahmad is... Been able to use his speed to get past that back line here tonight, and uh, Dudley saw that Zach and was able Richard to step up. Playing to Tyler Retchen, and he's defended by Pia Santini, but a heel pass would have had Richard wide open. But it's broken up by Torres, and he's able to clear all the way back to Dudley. Sorry for cutting you off there, Chad. It's okay. <laughs> it's getting a little bit excited. Tyler Dudley. Set to punt this one. And it goes off the leg of Barker. Bit of a flying heel from Oliveri. He kicks it towards the midfield bar. Pia Santini comes out of nowhere. And it's defended nicely by Biggins. Tyler Retchen clears up the sideline right to the foot of Owen Hall. As he takes his sweet old time and Looks towards Thibodeau. Now Thibodeau racing up the far sideline and unable to cross it. Exits the playing field off of a Spartan and will result in a West Springfield Terrier. Should be a corner kick and it will be. This is a big one here for West Springfield. Under 12 and a half minutes here. They need to get one soon if they want to have any chance at advancing here in this playoff. Torres with the cross, far post. 
And it goes out of bounds. I believe, okay, off of an East Low Metal player. So another opportunity for the Terriers. Ayan Ahmad. This time from the opposite corner flag. His cross to the near post. Off the knee of Presnell. Excuse me, Richard. And now another pass in from Ahmad. And Dudley comes all the way out to punch it. And now East Law Metal making their way upfield. Taken down on the play is Shane Smith. Jake Thibodeau, just an aggressive play. But Smith's gonna get the call in his favor. Andrew Oliveri will have the free kick for the Spartans. Just over 11 minutes left in the second half of this quarterfinal. Sam Hanley a little bit mossed by Flaherty. Biggins, Ahmad taken down by Merrigan, no call. West Springfield sideline very upset about that one. Zach Richard to Tyler Retchen, and he chips it. Looking for Mike Monroe or Zach Richard and goes out of bounds off of Armstrong. Spartan throw in on this near sideline for Jack Merrigan. Merrigan's quick throw in to Retchen. And his cross to Monroe. And Monroe a little too far out. And that will exit the playing field. A goal kick now for Armstrong. Perhaps a little bit beneficial to Esau Meadow as time starts to really tick down here for West Springfield. And a clear from Flaherty. Jack Merrigan steps up in front of Ahmad, but not before Thibodeau is able to clear it right back towards the defensive line. Andrew Oliveri chased down by Thibodeau. And Mike Monroe has to play it out as Armstrong was pursuing. And that's Torres, his cross, looking for Piacentini, Ahmad, trying to get goal side positioning. And the volley from Piacentini off the head again and finally cleared out by Shane Smith. Joe Presnell chasing it down and finally able to regroup. East Longmeadow has some numbers going the other way. Joe Presnell. Trying to settle it down, able to, has some space, touches it, shoots, and it goes over the crossbar. Some excellent control there by Presnell, as there is con some confusion about where the ball will be coming from for the goal kick. Again, Presnell able to use his body to box his guy out and then open himself up for a lefty shot inside of the box, so. 8.40 remaining in regulation, EL up 3-1. Barker trying to find Ahmad. And the clear over to the sideline. Sam Hanley unable to keep it in. Throw in for the Terriers, Flaherty. Right off the face of Oliveri. And now Flaherty once again. This time off of Penna. And Barker working with Melvin. Jack Merrigan. Pia Centini. A one on one battle with Tyler Retchen. And Retchen using his body, bodies Pia Centini off the ball. And Sam Han or excuse me, Jack Merrigan will have the throw in. Merrigan's throw in. Off the back of Richard. And Melvin switches fields quickly to Thibodeau. Thibodeau with a great self pass over the head of Oliveri. And he looks to shoot and gets one on net. But Dudley's there to come up with another big save. Dudley has definitely kept East Law Meadow in this game tonight. Some unreal saves from him. Absolutely, he's been a big player here. As we. 
approach the seven minute mark here at Spartan Stadium. East Salt Meadow leads three to one if you're just joining us here on LCAT. Armstrong set to take the free kick at the midfield marker. Armstrong sends it towards the top of the 18 as it trickles inside the six, looking for a foot of a terrier. Unable to connect. And will result in an East Long Meadow goal kick for Jack Merrigan as a sub comes in. Brendan Stone will replace Zach Richard. And now Merrigan's clear. Looking for Presnell and stolen by Armstrong. And now Mike Monroe with a bit of a push from the back from Torres. So he's bodied off the ball and exchanges a couple with Torres. And now Flaherty sends a through ball. Ahmad has some space. Dudley has to come all the way out. And some contact with Dudley results in a free kick for East Long Meadow. Dudley able to use his body as well as some coordination to grab control of that ball and box out any attackers. Just a great play there. He's been good all night. Merrigan sends this one sky high directly to the head of Owen Hall. And Ahmad looks to get a head ball on it. And Monroe able to find it first. And Biggins, some contact on Penna. Pia Santini looking to make his way towards the middle of the field. And now Joe Presnell chasing down Armstrong. And we have finally reached the five minute mark brought to you by Hot Table Panini. And now Shane Smith making his way upfield. Melvin stops it. And the remaining time of regulation will be kept by the referees on field. And a throw in now for Oliveri. Sam Anley, a self pass over the head of Flaherty. And this ball exits the playing field. Just around four minutes remaining in regulation. He's somehow looking to close this one out. Sub coming in now for the Spartans, Zach Richard. I believe they uh, stop time in between throw-ins. And now Oliveri sends this one and right to the foot of Flaherty as Ahmad chases it down. And Ahmad trying to keep it in bounds and it exits the playing field. Will be an East Long Meadow throw-in. Tyler Retchen. Merrigan. Excuse me, Jack Merrigan taking the throw in. East Long Meadow looking to finish this game off here with the three to one lead. Shane Smith, Joe Presnell has some space. Armstrong was taken down on the play. And Owen Hall with some extracurriculars from Joe Presnell. And West Springfield Terriers will have a free kick late in this second half. Armstrong sends a chip towards the right side of the six. And it goes cleanly out of bounds on the goal line and will result in an East Long Meadow goal kick for Jack Merrigan. With just around three and a half-ish minutes remaining, Jack Merrigan sets to take this goal kick and launches this one just around the half field mark. Presnell, Armstrong goes over his back and able to win it. And a nice defensive breakup 
by Dioscoli. Barker playing to Thibodeau. Penna back to Thibodeau. Thibodeau looking for the cross towards the PK mark. It spits out some space available and Dudley dives on it. Just about two and a half to go. Dudley taking his time. Joe Presnell with Owen Hall. Pia Santini. And Torres, bit of a push on Monroe. And Flaherty with Sam Hanley chased down. His clear goes off the head of Monroe. Zach Richard looking to get involved. Now Chris Torres. Monroe clears towards the far sideline. Sam Hanley's there to keep the ball in bounds. And under two minutes remaining in regulation. Zach Richard applying pressure on Owen Hall as Hall makes a nice cut move. And a bit of a communication between him and Armstrong, but Armstrong's able to grab the ball and clear it up the sideline. And will be a throw in now for East Long Meadow. Andrew Oliveri. Throws it in. Just around a minute and a half remaining. And now Thibodeau. Trying to make things happen late in the game. And a throw in now for the Terriers. Torres goes back to Flaherty. And now Flaherty unable to clear inside. Armstrong sends a seed right to the foot of Torres. Mike Monroe looking to clear. Armstrong comes all the way back and keeps it in the offensive zone off the head of Penna. And now Shane Smith. Chris Torres. And the it's all over chant starting to resonate from the East Law Middle Student section. Under a minute remaining in regulation. Armstrong. Trying to get the ball, and that'll do it. East Long Meadow advances to the semifinal game, winning 3 1. Goal scores Zach Richard with the first of the night, followed up by two with Sam Hanley. The third goal being scored on a penalty kick, all in the first half. I mean, some dominant performances shown by some East Long Meadow players. And overall, the team just looks very connected tonight. And I'm definitely excited going in to the next game. Esau Meadow through the season has improved to an eight and seven and two record here. Finally breaking that 500. And that's a big win for Esau Meadow to get. They're really starting to develop as a team coming into uh, or moving on into the semifinal game. I don't know if we have a date for that quite yet. It might be tomorrow, but I could be mistaken. I think that the girls play tomorrow. Yeah, I, I am not sure when their next game will be, but hopefully you'll be able to join us that evening if I don't have hockey, and I pray that I don't. <laughs> uh, that would be a real shame. Because, Chad, you never know. This could have been my last time commentating here on LCAT as the season is starting to wind down for both boys and girls soccer, and if hockey interferes, then... This could be my last time signing off here on LCAT. So I thank you for all who have been watching me and, you and Chad. You Friday, you know? Well, I will be in the student section on Friday oh, because that is my okay. last game. So Fair enough. Um, this could be my last time, our last we'll time see, signing yeah. off. Huh. Um, so we thank all of you who have been joining us the past two years. We hope that we've made your experience good. And we won't say goodbye yet, but thank you for joining us here on LCAT. East Law Metal takes this one, 3-1, as we go to the semifinals. Have a great night.